Hey friends, we are really glad for seeing you here. We haven't posted a new clip for a while, and because we have a new project, we thought it would be great if we can document the steps for running the free edition of Nutanix called Community Edition, in short CE, nested on top of vSphere 7. I personally tried an older version some few years ago, but due to some issues, we decided to deploy Nutanix on VMware Workstation as a testing lab. Recently, the Nutanix community reported some great feedback for running CE nested, so let's give it a try. The binary is delivered inside an archive, you will need to extract the content and rename the file as ce-flat.vmdk, plus adding some information about the disk descriptor in a text document with the same extension. I am planning to do a 3-node cluster, so I already imported the vmdk into three distinct folders, and the disk will be used when creating the Nutanix CE virtual machines. For networking, I will need a switch configured with promiscuous mode and force transmit to allow. Leaving force transmit to its default setting of reject, it will make the Nutanix controller virtual machine unreachable. Now everything is in place. We have the CVMDK imported and the VMware switch configured. So let's jump into creating the three virtual machines that will be part of the Nutanix cluster. We will be using the create new virtual machine option I will go with the demo nutanix ho 01 to ho 3 as a naming convention. Select the cluster or the host where the VMs will reside. Select the date to store. Mind that each C virtual machine will require a little over 700 gig for storage and SSD is mandatory. Select Linux and CentOS 64 as a guest OS. And let's customize the hardware. I am going with four vCPUs with the hardware assisted virtualization extension set to enable. 24 gig of RAM per C host. We will delete the default disk and select the use existing hard disk and locate the C VMDK file that we uploaded a few minutes ago. And we will need to create two additional disks per host, a 200 gig disk used for hot tier and the 700 gig used for cold tier. Both are configured within provisioning for saving some space. Once you finish reviewing the VM specs and settings, let's hit finish. Great, we have finished creating one host. For 23, I am just fast forwarding the video. All hosts are configured exactly the same. Once the VM creation task is completed, you should have three Nutanix CE virtual machines. Next, we are powering on the virtual machines and open a VMware console. I would recommend powering and configuring the CE virtual machines individually. No need to rush or be in a hurry as everything will be slow as is nested. So you'll have plenty of time. When you are at the login prompt, use the install command for raising the installer interface window. You will need some network settings like IP address, mask and gateway for the host IP address. This is the AHV hypervisor and different settings for the controller virtual machine, which is the management interface of the host. I have went with .81 for the host and .71 for the CVM, accept a long end user license agreement and start the installation. Mind that we are skipping the create single node cluster option. We are now powering on host 02 and you'll need to open a VMware console. Had some fat fingers, but use the same install command for raising the configuration window and follow the onboarding steps as before. Network settings for the HV. In my scenario, I went with .82 and CVM with .72. Once everything is completed for the network settings, accept the end user license agreement and start the installation. Don't forget that the video is sometimes on fast forward, especially during end user license agreements um, or during the install times. I have seen in my case that the waiting times for the Nutanix CVM to start is anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, probably in relation with the host specs and resources available. Powering on host 03 this time, I definitely saw the performance penalty hit. It took way more than the previous two hosts to raise the prompt and the install window, but still decent for testing. This host will have the .83 address, 
where the CVM will be running .73. Accept again the long end user license agreement and start the installation task. Same, we are skipping the create single node cluster and the installation will take anywhere between 35 to 1 hour. Next, I am just going back and forward between the console windows to check the status of all three hosts and see what is finished. Host01 finishes successfully and I can see its controller virtual machine IP address while the host number 2 failed and I had to go with the clean install all data destroyed as I'm not losing anything. It was indeed weird that it failed having exactly the same specs, no changes for the networking details for the host 02 and its CVM, except again the long and user license agreement and this time the installation completed successfully. Now all three hosts completed the install task. We had a small hiccup for host 2 but ended up ok eventually. I can see all three controller virtual machines IP addresses in the VMware consoles and I now want to create the cluster. I am using PuTTY to open an SSH connection to one of the CVMs. I am selecting the first one from our list, .71, and authenticate with its default credentials. Username is Nutanix, password is Nutanix forward slash for you. The command to create the cluster is cluster-s, followed by the IP addresses with comma between them, and the command create. This will take some good 7 to 10 minutes to create the cluster. In my case, it finished successfully, but the cluster status command was returning that all services were down. This is where I have started to do a small troubleshooting and decided to check the nodes. I have tried accessing the CVM with the .71 IP address from the uh, Chrome browser, followed by its management port of 9440, but still the console was not accessible. It was returning this, oops, server error message. In the VMware vSphere console, the situation was not that great either. All three Nutanix virtual machines were taking all the CPUs assigned by checking the whole CPU column. And looking at the CVM from the SSA session with the top command, was telling me that the Nutanix management role was not having its best days as the load was through the roof. I have decided to stop all three Nutanix nodes and change the CPU from 4 to 6, power them on again and check the CVM load after some few minutes. Ok, so the new resources are in place. Let's restart the SSH connection to the TOT71 CVM and check again the load with the top command. I'm using the same credentials Nutanix as a username and Nutanix forward slash for you as a password, doing the top command and actually adding more CPU resources did not really have any positive effect and so that in reality I have bumped the performance for the HV hypervisor itself but not to the CVM. The CVM was still configured with its default settings of two vCPUs and 16 gig of RAM. And again, the services were still trying to start. This is a comparison between in the left the HV hypervisor and in the right the Nutanix controller virtual machine. Looking at the CPU specs, it revealed that the changes were perform at the hypervisor level, still the Nutanix CVM was running with the default settings. I have found the config file where you can change the resources, but before doing any changes, all services were up and running. So being in a nested infrastructure again, you need to be patient and you need to wait as everything is slow. Cluster status is actually telling me this time that all services are up and running, as you can see here, and this time the console was up as well, where I was able to authenticate with the default credential of admin and the Nutanix for you. 
once you first log in you will have to change the default password now i will be able to authenticate to the nutanix prism with my password username is admin and the password that i have defined here i am actually asked to insert my next credentials now this is again something that uh, will not work as there are no dns servers configured in the nutanix cluster so using the same ssh and party connection to the nutanix cvm any cvm will work but i'm still connected to the first one there is a command ncli cluster add to name servers and your server for the dns ip or fqdn this will fix the issue and you will be able to move forward the dns server is now added you'll also have an output command and a status and after that we'll try again the nutanix next credentials great so that's the successful command moving back to the console nutanix next And after a lot, lot of minor issues with resources, with the DNS, with the second host that failed during the installation task, now we have uh, access to the Nutanix Prism console. What I usually like to check first is um, to give the cluster a name. I will use the demo.nutanix and create an IP address for the cluster. I will be using the dot 70 ip address and last but not least i'm going to the home virtual machine and table option to make sure that all three virtual machines the cvms are listed in there so let's check them now so home virtual machines table which is the next tab and you'll have to enable the tick box include controller virtual machines so that's it for now thanks again for watching this video subscribe to our channel hit that thumbs up button leave us a comment and until next time take care thanks again